I, I don't understand that. I'm not a Christian, so I shouldn't judge. But I'm Jewish, so I will. <laughs> oh, I love you more than life itself. I think it might be all espresso. All right, so are we, are we um, on YouTube Live right now? Welcome to the entire world. Uh, the YouTube um, Thank you, Leslie. is live. There's a URL for it. Is it coming from our Will and Willie channel? Yes. There is a You and Will and Willie channel on YouTube. And if I had more time, would someone like talk to Willie Brown for about a half an hour outside? No, I don't need that much time. What's, what's you're on calling, the You're calling the mayor now. What's on the Will and Willie channel? Um, our live feed. Oh, and a lot of the archives. You only need two here. You could put one on. Well, don't put it near the electronic equipment. Don't worry about it. Give it to Debbie. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, quote, this goddamn town is so screwed up. I'll be there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, that, I, you know, it's like... When, 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 when Willie Brown was mayor, traffic lights were timed. So, so, tra no, so traffic would move at the speed limit. No, no, no. That's when he had the secret switch and could make them all green ahead of him. No, the, see, when Willie Brown used to drive back and forth to Sacramento, I think he has, um, I think it was a Porsche, but I think he has it parked somewhere, garage someplace. But even after he could hardly see that clearly in a distance, he still drove. And the CHP would see something going by at 110 miles an hour and go, oh, that's the speaker. That's Willie Brown. Yeah, leave him alone. Don't pull him over. That's kind of I got to get used thing up here, so I I got the URL and I'll I'll put it on our Will and Willie Facebook page. We we um. There it is. Thank you, Hugh. So, let me give you the crew here. Leslie, you saw come in. Leslie K is the associate producer. Let's hear it for Leslie. She's. A Indispensable. I could not do this without her. Seriously. And Richard Mott, who's helped us out many times. Is, is that actually working now? You're, you're wonderful. Richard has got a good back and mine is not. So we, we set up the, the PA. I'll say some more of the thank yous. You and Ace of Reality TV on video and audio. Reality Check, Reality Check TV. Uh, who also take care of Comedy Day, except when it rains <laughs> on Comedy Day, because equipment and rain, eh, wrong answer. There will be no okay, not a match. Uh, also, I want to thank Music City, um, Music City San Francisco and Rudy Colombini, the proprietor. It's going to be a center for bands for the Bay Area music scene to have a rebirth, and it's under construction right now and seriously under construction because I went by the other day and there were actual walls, and so that's looking good. Mayor <coughs> Willie Brown, everybody. Thank you. Come around my side or your side or whatever. Are you kidding me? I would stand, but... Uh, you better not. Uh, I can't, yeah. Hey, well, how you doing, man? Don't you know me? Staying out of trouble. Good to see you, Willie Lewis. All right. Even got my fellow with me. Did you vote? Did you vote? I'm not eligible to vote. <laughs> Why, are you too old? I know it's my seat. Oh, yeah. Let me turn this off. I was just doing the, uh, the honors of uh, swing this around to you. I don't think you want to put it on the heater. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thanks. They don't serve hat at this restaurant. They don't serve flam hot flambe. Um, however, they do serve wonderful food here at Mona Lisa, Mari e Monti, which is surf and turf in Italian, restaurant and bar. So they are generously providing their space for our show in honor of Will and Willie and to help with the GoFundMe 
for Will, they will donate a portion of anything you eat and drink to his fund. So let's Not hear the it. money. They're going to they're gonna cut up the steak and so a portion <laughs> of the meal. The, they'll cut up the steak. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have a steak in this? <laughs> All right, so um, if, if everybody's ready, I think I've run out of thank yous for the moment. I could thank Lee Housekeeper. <laughs> Because you like hearing your name. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank Debbie Durst. Yes, let's hear it for Debbie. Yeah. She's Will been a guardian lucked out. angel. Yes. I Will, did luck out. The Will three girlfriends out. I had before Debbie would have ditched me long ago. They would have sold the house and moved to Portugal. <laughs> Why Portugal? <laughs> So I guess we're ready to begin. No theme music here. Um, we're on YouTube Live. Um, and I suppose... No theme music. <laughs> Do you want to whistle something? <laughs> Willie and the boys. This is the first time we've actually been together. For three years. For three I long years. The yeah. Will and Willie yeah. Show. Ladies Dude, and gentlemen, Dude, the Will and Willie Show. Fast live. Uh, I had a vast Mona Lisa, incident. Monty, and Monte. As they say. Say what, Will? I had a vascular incident. So the last time Will Durst did a public performance was the Will and Lily show he did on October 1st, 2019. And uh, then he was about to go on stage at a private showing in the Presidio. For the uh, Mime Troops 35th anniversary. Yeah, and I was backstage and uh, couldn't keep my balance. And somebody said, my mom's a doctor. She's in the audience. I'm going to go get her. And then she did. And then suddenly I was in a hospital on my back. And they, they had to uh, open up my skull and put in a carpet sweeper <laughs> to push out all the the spinal fluid and blood. It was it was bizarre. And the surgeon, he's he's cracking open my skull and he keeps going, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you know, and I was I was listening. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> 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 he actually thought he was talking about somebody else. And Debbie was going to sue. But I talked her out of it. So a long story short is, here you are. Yeah, I'm back. Uh huh. I can, I can stand in there. I just can't and walk. it's the first time that I laid eyes on Will. Since when? Since Quite a, 2019. Yes, and we, you know, we've been together for a long time. We go all the way back to the 80s. When yeah, I used to hire you used to hire me. Washington with me. Used to hire me to say shit that you you couldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> and people believed <laughs> that he got the inspiration someplace, but we have been together literally all these years one time we did something every day three hours a day I for mean, almost was, a year for 11 months yeah, we did that That was the toughest job i would ever had yeah you would life. show up at like two minutes before uh, seven. always i did always. morning radio for seven years <laughs> don't cry on my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> we're not crying no. <laughs> but we're glad to see all of you though yeah we really are glad to see every one of you it's a lovely, safe room with a lot of outdoor air. And for the few of you who are Raider fans, they were leading uh, 20 to 10. A few of you. At Any Raiders half. fans? Show of hands. <laughs> One, two. All right. Any 49er fans? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And it's a bye week, so it was perfect for us to do the show. So there is this little thing called a midterm election coming up on Tuesday. And that'll be the main topic of today's program. But one thing I want to say is Pennsylvania, 
Dr. Oz, seriously? I mean, Oprah just finally said something. Yeah, but she didn't say enough. She should have talked, mm -hmm. she should have said, you know, when I hired him, he was a quack. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that, would have, that would have really helped. <laughs> that would have helped a lot. <laughs> but she did endorse uh, Fetterman. Fetterman, but didn't speak ill of um, Oz, because I guess he still has a contract. Uh, and that uh, if he doesn't make the job of senator, he'll s still be working for, o for Oprah. Uh, and selling his supplements. Yes. <laughs> his dodgy supplements. But what? you know, if you if you if the pollsters are as inaccurate this time around, and I really hope they are, if they're as inaccurate this time around as they were two years ago, uh, it will be highly uh, beneficial uh, because clearly uh, there's no way in the world that um, we Democrats ought to lose Georgia, and no way in the world Oz ought to beat us. We clearly have a good shot of saving the lady in Nevada. No way the astronaut, the astronaut in, in, in Arizona, Arizona uh, is going to lose. Well, so, you know, they, they need to take out some of our people, um, whether it's in the and Senate. We, and we get a chance at Wisconsin, too. Yeah, Mandela Barnes against Johnson. And we got a chance in uh, Ryan Ohio, Johnson. Ryan versus the guy that he's running against. Uh, yeah, so we, Vance, is that guy's name. J.D. Vance. We really do have a good collection of candy, but that's one thing that's very confusing for me. Well, you know. Herschel about, Walker? <laughs> I, I, I don't say words that ought not to be broadcast. <laughs> Herschel Walker, to. of all people. Yeah. You know, he was here when when we did the carrying of the torch uh, for the um, uh, for the Olympics. Um, many of you will probably not remember that, but uh, people wanted to disturb running with the torch. And Newsom, being Newsom, uh, did not want to have them disturbed, and so he uh, let them disturb. So he lists, listed me to go run and carry San Francisco's torch. Who is my running mate? Herschel Walker. That photograph has been burned. <laughs> what, was, what was the conversation like? <laughs> there was none. He, he doesn't uh, talk. His, his plan for school shootings is fewer schools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which will also result in more Republicans. Well, you know, his, that, came, that race between uh, Wadnock and, and Herschel is going to December. That's going to be a runoff. Neither one of them. Oh, you got to get 50, 50 plus? You have to get 50 plus one. I did not know that. You did not? You did not know that. Well, that's, well, that's, that's why there was a runoff in, in January last year. That's exactly time. why there was a runoff in the two Senate seats. Yeah. And There's we want them one both. right yeah. thing in Georgia. We want them both. It. What? There's one right thing in Georgia. That might be it, that they have to do a runoff. Yeah. And if, you, if you can get Herschel one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you can probably take him out. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, the good Revan is looking forward uh, to that effort. And there's one thing that the good Revan doesn't have to worry about. A good Reverend has raised more money than anybody else alive in the whole country. Everybody is wanting to give to the preacher. Now I know what Father Divine had in mind, Well, <laughs> When he was doing his number. Well, you're a preacher without a collar. <laughs> and, 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 he was and without a church. <laughs> and he was a saint to a lot of uh, people in San Francisco who were... No, you Let's get a say, 49 square mile church. You, no, but, well, but your first clients as a lawyer were the people that couldn't get defended very easily. No, 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 no. The, my clients got defended. They just didn't want to pay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
clients with fringe benefits. And I accommodated them <laughs> appropriately. <laughs> well, what do you think the most important thing in this? I, your eyebrows just went, what, me? <laughs> what do you think the most important election is in this whole thing? Which is the pivotal seat? Is there one? I don't know. Which ones are, to you, the most important? Well, Wisconsin. Johnson versus Burns. Because you are from Wisconsin. Yeah. And that would be a single spectacular win. Well, and you're absolutely right. Because Ron, no Johnson, Ron Johnson is like uh, Trump Jr. He's Different is. hair color. Yeah. Not orange. Isn't that funny that we went from a black president to an orange president? <laughs> <laughs> and, now we, and now we have one who aspires to beige. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, any year, though, we may have Newsom. And he's got a full head of hair. Yeah, not this year, though. I mean, he won't run in 2024, will he? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think he... Uh, will wait for a better opportunity, but he is going to be formidable in every respect. Uh, he's coming in here tomorrow, I think. Uh, he's going to be here tomorrow and uh, Monday and Tuesday. Well, I think he did a good job, job with COVID-19 in California. I think he gets uh, high marks for that. Well, you know, the guy that did the best job in the country is out of a job. Cuomo had the best deal going uh, for a long time until they caught him. Uh, and that was a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like the number one Democratic governor in the country. And then, uh, you know, me too dropped by the cello. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Uh, and he's gone. And now that mayor, that and his brother's him. gone too. Yeah, the brother got trapped into uh, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, Andrew got trapped because he began to help speak him. on behalf of his brother. Well, he was just. I mean, bullpen. that's what you do. I mean, that's what Chris Cohen. Chris Cohen. Oh, Where did I Chris. Get Andrew from? Chris. That's the father. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, Andrew. did Chris get a gig? Yeah, he's working on News Nation. On News Nation. What's that? <laughs> What's that? What's any of that? Uh, channel 775. Uh, really? No idea. <laughs> On Comcast? Yes. 775? Yeah. No. Is, it, is it like uh, a Fox News for yeah, smart yeah, people? Yeah. yeah. News Nation? I always liked Will Durst. Maybe they slogan. need a commentator. What? No way. They always call him for no a soundbite. No, I think All they make it up. They make it up. Oh yeah, hell yeah, they make it up. I don't give I don't give out sign sound bites. <laughs> I've they seen you on camera. camera. Are you saying that's I a deep sell fake? Sound bite, but that, <laughs> okay. They get a Willie Brown impersonator. Yeah, <laughs> and that's easy to do. Okay, here's what I want to know. You can help me on this. Uh, 36, 37, 26, 27, 26, 27. Yeah. vote no, vote no and yes, on both, 26, Proposition. 27, the, the one gambling that, ones, the yeah. gambling ones, who let all these people in, that's what I want to know, because there's good Indians and bad Indians, and uh, the bad Indians, Wants you to vote. But the good Indians say don't vote with the bad Indians. Yeah, just vote with us. Well, they had that one commercial with that one guy with a red shirt and the mate. He's gone. About, about 11 people. They pulled, yeah, they, they they pulled, pulled that the eventually. Plug. Yeah, they pulled the plug and, on and, that. And, you know, I don't want to be politically in, incorrect to say one little, two little, three little, but, you know, I counted <laughs> them and I was like, this is the whole thing. These are the people that, they're, that support it. It was like maybe two other little tribes. There have been more than four hundred and fifty million dollars spent on, on those two by DraftKings and um, the other one, FanDuel. It's FanDuel. And, and they'll be back. They will be back. There's no way you roll in four fifty and lose 
and not try one more time, particularly since they're spending our money. After well, maybe, all, maybe was, they'll give California more money as part of the package. Well, I was supposed to one last night. I got it this morning, I didn't. That $1.4 billion. Oh, yeah. You yeah. didn't win? No, I didn't win. I, I Did mean, we win? Nobody won. Nobody won? Yeah. Again? Yeah. What's it 1. now? $1.9 billion. Today, it went up to one nine. Well, I hear one Elon nine. Musk. Is, I hear Elon Musk is taking the money from firing people and buying tickets. <laughs> well, he needs the money. Yeah. Now we were uh, we early on when we were doing the morning show on Will and Willie, we gave him a, sh a shot on our show. No, he gave us a ride in. As a matter of fact, Will is correct. Yeah. We saw the first version. Yeah, that was prototype. The that was the first day of our show. He was our first guest. And, and Early on in it, yeah, at least. That, that ride scared the hell out of me. Though. Me too. Oh, man. I, it, it was like a Formula One racer with two tandem, the driver in the front. We went down the, the Embarcadero, back. and it was uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, so there was nobody on the Embarcadero. And it was totally quiet, and we went from zero to 80. It was just boom. Yeah, and, and it was didn't take a whole block to do that. It didn't take a block to do that. No. Nope. It was done just like that. It was a, a two. -seater. It was heavy G force, like you were doing a, a, a scene in one one of the the movies. You know? And I in said to myself, I'm going to buy the stock in this company when he goes public, but I didn't. Nor did I. He invited us to buy stock in his company. He was looking for help to get started. Mm -hmm. Literally, and we gave him the first opportunity for broadcast. Could have gotten on the He's ground floor. It. He's yeah. forgotten it now. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, return he, my calls. Hey, Sting doesn't <laughs> remember who played police first in America, but that that's just me. I'm just a DJ. <laughs> so we're, we're here now. It's another proposition I wanted to bring up because uh, Governor Newsom, GovGav, has been in 30? the TV commercials. What about 30? 30 is the one that uh, Lyft and some people associated with Lyft put on the ballot, urging uh, all of us to do something about making sure that lots of benefits come from buying a product that benefits them and their friends. Electric but it also vehicles. benefits the environment. Yeah, electric vehicles. Absolutely. Heavy duty electric Cause in there, Isn't there a deal where uh, Lyft and Uber have to have electric vehicles by 2035? Or that's is that everybody? Of, that's part of the obligation so that's going to come with so no, re no new sales of fossil fuel cars. Combustion that, engines. That's right. Interior so therefore you, you, you'll be obviously urged, if not pushed, to buy electric cars only. So if you, you know, I have one of those cars. Uh, uh, I have one. I have. I have an Uber. A, I mean, a Lyft. Uh, or at least Blanche has a, a Lyft. <laughs> it's not not exactly mine. Uh, but she bought it when the uh, benefits and tax credits were so good. No, she has Early a Leaf. On. She, she has a Leaf. The, yeah. She's got one of the original ones, and lift. they have been trying to buy it back from her to leave. year in and year out. And she refuses to sell. She yeah, has fewer than 30,000 miles on it. It's six, seven years old. And it has the same function as a brand new car because it's a computer, you know, with a cabin and it moves and wheels. And they keep updating it, the content thereof, uh, regularly, every time they do something different, including you know, having somebody else drive it. I'm waiting for my McFly hoverboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my car that I can pick up my cell phone and it'll show up out there with nobody driving and no witnesses as to where it's taken me. Uh, I'm waiting to go beam me up. Yeah, that's the problem. Oops, no wrong No matter planet. where you go, 
they got a record of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, supposedly. Obviously, you know, I've got some grandkids that seem to be able to <laughs> <laughs> crash everything electronically and let me know how uninformed I am on, on utilizing the instrument. So I'm certain uh, that that can be handled very easily. Just my youngest, those are the ones that are better informed about these instruments. And I love when these families talk about, at what point are we gonna give the kid a cell phone? Well, you mean another one? The kids had a cell phone before you got a cell phone. So he, he was watching Hulu in the womb. Yeah. <laughs> That's how good it really is. But in reality, we do need to try to figure out some way to urge the public uh, to go electric on cars. Uh, because well, that's what 30 is about, right? That's Doesn't it 30, give rebates? That's what 30 is about. Uh, but Newsom is correct in that the nature of uh, and the motivation is personal benefit, and he is against personal benefit for them. Uh, mm-hmm. And he is therefore, even today, I just saw him on television, he's in another ad, and, and he's, he's doing a lot of ads. A lot of ads. And then, of course, and there's a question of whether or not uh, the cars that I'm concerned about and I'm really interested in is the one that I want, as I said, to pick me up. All of a sudden, the trucks are better at doing what needs to be done elect- with the electric power. And the self-driving. Almost, uh, and the self-driving. Yeah, yeah, totally. Electric and self-driving. And, and people tell me it is because there's no density with the trucks. The trucks are on the roadway and everybody's going in one direction. Or you don't have all these people coming out of the driveway and coming off the sidewalk and all these other things. Yeah, the big problem with self-driving is left turns. Left turns. Left turns. To me, the big problem with self-driving is the cameras. You've got a handful of mud, it's over. What if you're on the freeway and a truck throws a lot of mud up on your cameras? What happens next? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I thought about that. Apparently some people haven't. You know, I mean, seriously, I, I trust my own reflexes. And I want to know about the batteries. What happens when the car dies? What do you do with the battery? You put it in the desert where GM buried all those electric cars that they had in the 80s. You mean when the EVs? Yeah, the early EVs. They took it back from people. People went, I thought I bought the car. Nope, read the fine print. You didn't buy it. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't want electric cars then. Yeah. No, one of the interesting things about Newsom, he had one of the first EVs. If you remember when he first became mayor of San Francisco, that's what he drove. He drove an electric car. He didn't use, um, didn't use the Lincoln that I used. He used an EV, you know, and it was his car. Don't you, don't you have a Porsche somewhere? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I had to liquidate. Oh, buddy! <laughs> and you didn't know you didn't give me first right of refusal. <laughs> no, my son took it. Ah, <laughs> oh. ah. I thought you were hiding it from him. Somewhere. That's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair and right and true and just. But didn't you, you used to drive it back and forth for, to Sacramento. I drove everything back and forth to Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> My best time was 57 minutes. From here to Sac? And a yeah. Tar, yeah. Uh, there's a Porsche going by really fast. <laughs> That's Willie Brown, don't worry about it. No, 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 you don't understand. I, I, it, it was important that I not be on the highway long. <laughs> and, and there was a lot of cooperation to make sure that I got off as quickly as possible. So, <laughs> 57 minutes? Yes. Yes. From 1515 Vallejo to the basement of, the, cap- of the Capitol yeah. building. Oh, yeah. my God. That's like 85 miles. Well, 83. 83? <laughs> 
the brakes. So the <laughs> average <laughs> speed would be 90 no, what? No, 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 a little faster than that. Oh, uh, 110? Yeah, a little faster than that. A little faster than that. <laughs> Get Which, faster than don't let this give you, you ideas. Average it out. They already average it out. In a Ferrari? Yeah. 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 The Ferrari. Testarossa. Oh, that's what it was. The red okay. Testarossa. What an incredible car. Oh. <laughs> what happened to that one? Well, well, it's an interesting thing because in those days, you couldn't easily get those kind of cars. Uh, and I managed, uh, along with, I think, you a baseball a player, they get one, yes. Yeah. And... Uh, Sure enough, Barry. Uh, no, Barry was a kid at that time. Willie, back in the eighties. No, Willie and Willie. They, don't, they won't put into the Hall of Fame. Who was the first guy they won't put in the Hall of Fame because Pete he Rose. wasn't? That's right. Pete Rose. Pete Rose had the first, and I had the second one. Speaking of, of which, us, yeah, yeah, each of us now we're probably in the same shape. Congratulations uh, to Dusty <laughs> Baker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Dusty. I mean. First of all, one thing Houston has is a little bit of orange in their uniform, yes. so that's a good thing. But Dusty, we all love Dusty. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 bond, coming, he's coming to visit us. Yes. He's going to come to visit San Francisco. Can we have a parade? No, it won't be a parade. <laughs> uh, but he's coming because I think he wants to roll by the Giants baseball park and, and give him the finger. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll have the trophy with them because they've got three. I understand that. Yeah. But if you recall, uh, they fired him. Yes. Uh, uh, and he was my client. And After a winning season. I uh, wait, was a it big at, winning season. It went to the World Series and the lost World Series, seven games. And it was because they said he pulled the pitcher in the sixth inning of the sixth, sixth game, game. Yeah. when they were leading. And he pulled Five Oswald yeah. and, uh, uh, and gave him the ball, had a ceremony, gave Ortiz, him the ball. Ortiz, wasn't it? And then we, yeah, and then we in, Ortiz. Ortiz. Yeah. yeah. And then we went on to lose it in Anaheim. Then they came up yeah. here and beat us in the rally seventh monkey. game. God, I hate it. But, rally. you know, Dusty has worked, has, co has coached, uh, managed a lot of teams. He, and they keep firing him. Yep. And and he, he takes them to the playoffs. Every one took of them. Took Chicago, took Washington, Cincinnati. took Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, they called him when Houston got caught. Uh, yeah. Sending signals. Finagling, yeah. Yes. They brought him in to clean that up. He took them to the World Series two years in a row. Yeah. He lost last year, I think, to Atlanta. Yeah. To the Braves. Right. And he goes in and he wins this year. Big time. And it wasn't Although, there's a discussion that's got to be held with him. How in the name of heavens can you hit six home runs, or seven home runs, in one game in the World Series? He lost that game seven to nothing. All home runs. And then again, he's going to respond by saying, who else do you know other than Don Larson that ever did one where yeah. there was no hit? Right, no and the other team. Don Larson was a perfect game. Too. Absolute perfect. And a f complete game. Yep. Yeah. And pitchers used to do that. That's my earliest baseball memory as a kid in the Bronx was that World Series and Don Larson winning that game. Damn, I'm old. <laughs> 1956. Uh huh. By the way, I'm Paul Wells. I'm the producer moderator of the show. My company, Flow Communications, put on the air, invited these two to team up. We did a demo. We had two offers. We took the better one. One with more money. Yeah, yeah, we should take in the longer one. No, that didn't last. That station went belly up quicker than, than, than the we station did. we were on. Although, let me tell you, being on there for the number of hours that we did it and the, all the business up? that we were able to do and the number of calls we made and the connection. Well, you had the best Rolodex in the history of radio. Oh, Bob Agnew Did wanted that Rolodex so Call bad. it up Clive Davis. and <laughs> A lot of favors were done uh, for our program. I think you got Michael Jackson on the radio once. I did. That's true. Mm -hmm. I did. He was uh, looking at the prospect for a trial down in Santa Barbara. And he knew that he was being taken advantage of money-wise. 
was, it was uh, not difficult for us to get him. Not difficult at all. Although, you know, the world has changed so much. Uh, what's the name of the woman now that uh, seems to be commanding the chart? She's got 10. Taylor Swift. What's her name? Taylor Swift. Ter for your new album. For yeah. her new album? All 10. All 10. All 10. Yeah. The top 10 and uh, really? Have you heard it? I've heard pieces of it. I admire her for two things. What? One is Taylor Swift actually has talent. And she writes her own stuff. She writes her own stuff. Um, Bob Leffitz, Leffitz put her down and that's why she wrote the song Mean. You know, because he said he, she couldn't sing and she couldn't write. So, um, and then the tangle with the record company and she stood up for herself even younger. She walked out on a deal in Nashville. I mean, it's not good enough. And so she got control of her own music and the catalog that she can't control, she just re-released new versions of the songs. Plus she stood up in, in that case and uh, you know, the guy who disgraced all of people in my profession have ever done morning radio by um, being a grab ass in a photo op behind everybody's back and she just stood there and smiled. That DJ later on got his comeuppance, but he, he tried to sue her and because she had deep pockets and she won the lawsuit and collected a dollar. <laughs> that's all she asked for probably. Yeah, that's all she wanted. It was the principal. And I would doubt he could afford to pay that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I, I think I have a couple left. Anyway, it's the Will and Willie Show. Um, again, let's hear it for the host of the show today, Will Durst, Willie Brown. And that's Paul Wells, and who he, this show would not have happened without. He put it all together, perseverance and perspicacity. Let me look that up. And, and by the way, if you have connection, uh, I posted the link to the Will and Willie Facebook page for the show. And it's an hour, but there's no time restriction because we're not live on the radio. Because we had a hard out. The hard out was the hardest thing to do with these guys on radio because there was network news at the top of the hour. And, and you know, we'd be in the middle of a riff. Uh, and and, and I'm not we willing to give it up. And we would air quits. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd have to cut, oh, 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 I'll cut them off and go to the break. Because we knew what our button was. Boom. Yeah, well, it was, it was a great run doing the mornings, and then someone made a deal with then Clear Channel, now iHeart, because they had a national show that they wanted to get on the air, and um, they probably uh, paid what they had to pay us <laughs> to get us out of the way. Because we still they had got our us out of the way, though. Yes, but that space that we were in uh, is now all green. It's a, it's a hotel. That hotel Vitali, yes. It, no, it's not Hotel One. No. Oh, that's right. It's they called changed Hotel the One. They changed the name, changed the whole operation connected with the hotel. Hotel it, One. Hotel One, and I, it's I the know. one place in this town where everything that they serve is organic. Are they associated with any of the other uh, chains? They are a chain themselves. Like Ch like Sheridan or no, no, or? no, no, none of the flagships. They're trying to become a flagship. Did you and see everything the, in it is green? Did you see the stinking rose moved across the street? Yeah, it's right next door. Yeah, yeah. It moved here, and uh, as a matter of fact, Mona Lisa moved across the street. No, Mona Lisa still has their place across the street. What is this one? What this is Mona Lisa Mare Imante, which is basically Italian for surf and turf. And this is slightly more upscale than the old Mona Lisa. Why that one says Mona Lisa number three, I don't know. I assume that Leonardo da Vinci painted Mona Lisa number one. Who number two was, I don't know. But I know that we're here, and, and let's hear it for our host, by the way. It's a bit more than generous to let us use this space. Geez, you go down for two and what years. I, and what I like is that little car that's outside. You see that little? What is oh, it? Mo I don't Mauricio's know. I can't. Car. It's a Fiat. Yeah. Is it? It's a little tiny Fiat with wooden yeah, 62, seats. 62. Wooden seats. That had to hurt on the roads in Italy. 
Splinters. Alone. Splinters, yes, and, but a beautiful wooden dashboard. But it's so classic. A '62 Fiat. Yes, a little teeny Fiat. Wow. <laughs> We can't hear you on, on, on YouTube. It's yeah. a pretty, I'm, I'm it's a sure pretty his name is Tony. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say that. I had a Ford <laughs> at one point. I could barely afford it. Okay, that's enough for me. Yes. Back to you. <laughs> Back so, to the Will and Willie show. Now, what is going to happen? How many the, people here have been vaccinated? How many have had three shots? How many have had four shots? How many have had five shots? Debbie's had five. I've had five. You've had five? I'm, I'm looking for my fifth. Yeah, I'll get my fifth. Who here has had a flu shot this year? I want my fifth shot to be bourbon. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, are there any predictions for the midterm? Will, Willie? I think uh, the Democrats lose the House, but maintain the Senate. Actually, pick up a seat or two in the Senate. That's what I'm guessing. Well, you know, I'm concerned. And I mentioned it to Housekeeper that uh, Democrats came up with the brilliant idea that they ought to uh, make sure that Trump type Republicans got the Republican nomination. Yeah, they actually put money on their game. And a number of them, without realizing that, uh, you know, Republicans vote for Republicans, whether they're Trumpites or not, period. And they, they can never ultimately go independent or become Democrats. And so when you help them elect somebody that can command a certain level of loyalty from a voter who will go out even in the rain to vote, that's a mistake. And Democrats um, did that in some places. Yeah, I agree. And they are, are paying the price because, believe me, there are contests in the state of California that would not be uh, competitive at the moment for the U.S. Congress had we been smart enough not to get involved in whatever the Republicans were doing uh, among themselves and with themselves. Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene ran unopposed. She, she's only there because the Democrats failed to do anything. She might have won anyway, but still, there was no one opposing her in the election. Who, who was asleep at the switch in the Democratic Party? I'm, I'm not that high up, Willie Brown. I mean, <laughs> who, who, who was uh, completely asleep? I mean, I know Clinton was asleep on no, the FCC No, I don't think anybody was changed. asleep. I think they were brain dead. Okay. <laughs> Period. <laughs> because it was a real strong advocacy. I also think uh, that uh, we Democrats may have made a mistake. Roe v. Wade was back in, I don't know, April or May or July or sometimes, and we were just carried away. And we spent probably $400, $500 million in various campaigns doing Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is about six or seventh on the decision-making place now for people, even among Democrats. Yet, we bet all of the bank on Roe v. Wade. It's the economy, stupid. Totally. Yeah, that's totally. what Clinton's campaign was about. It's the economy, stupid, and it still is. And, and, and Roe Ro v. Wade, by the way, you know, the Supreme Court failed on that, too. You know, the Democrats failed to see any of this coming. And then being in retro, you know, form of, of trying to fight something that's already been done. Well, keep in mind, the worst member of the Supreme Court. Um, Clarence Thomas? Clarence Thomas, mm -hmm. the single worst member of the Supreme Court got on the Supreme Court because the Democrats decided to respect exactly. the process in 1991 uh, when Thurgood Marshall was being replaced. And who chaired the committee? Biden. That's right. And who grilled <laughs> Anita Hill? Biden. Biden. <laughs> and, I, and when did I re lose respect for Joe Biden? About then. 
You're kidding. I, when he was so gung ho to get Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court, well, I don't think he was gung ho. But he discounted was, everything Anita Hill okay. was saying. I don't think I think she was telling the truth. Of course, she told the truth. Okay, you know, she just didn't have Me Too hanging with her. If, if Me Too had been around that time, uh, Clarence would be living with Ms. Green. <laughs> Practically, he is. <laughs> And I suspect he wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, we are stuck with. But it's also our fault, because every time there's a Supreme Court nominee and he's asked about Roe v. Wade, he says, I respect the president. Well, yeah, you could say that, but then they don't respect the president. They're going to do what they, they, you know. They lie to you. Yeah, they're just lying. They totally and completely lied. There's no way that they, yeah. and 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 it's it's too bad too because the same thing with affirmative action. You yeah, watch, the bad guys seem to live longer and stay on the court longer. <laughs> <laughs> you would think the Lord, the would good be, do die young. Yeah, yeah. You you would think Except the Lord would us. be more dedicated. Except for us. Yeah, we. Uh, Oh, we owe too many people. <laughs> <laughs> Our debts are too high. <laughs> We'd bankrupt the country of some. <laughs> I, I saw one article in the New York Times, and I think this is part of our problem right now. It's people aware, they are aware that in this midterm election and potentially 2024, if the orange thing doesn't choke on a chicken bone before then. The orange thing. The orange, yeah. Cheeto Mussolini was my nickname for him. Uh, if we have democracy, the form of government, whether you want to call it a republic or a democracy, yes, we're both. You know, it's a floor wax <laughs> and a <laughs> shoe polish. Yeah, it's the same thing. But the thing is that people are aware that democracy is on the line, but they don't seem to care that much. They don't feel the threat. Why because, is that? because America survives. I mean, we made it through eight years of Reagan, eight years of Bush, eight years of Clinton. America survives, you know? So people just assume it's going to make it through these bumps. Isn't that a line in, in the Field of Dreams? <laughs> yeah. About baseball. If you build it, they will come. But, uh, you know, America's been torn down and built up, erased and redone. But baseball is the one constant that, that it's kept going. There's a reason we gave you the orange microphone sock there. <laughs> Aaron Judge, San Francisco Giant, number 99. You think he's coming? I do. Well, uh, I think he's worn out. How old is he now? 29 or 30, somewhere in that neighborhood? Yeah. We got Barry Bonds at about the same age, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the 90s. Worthwhile. And we went on from there to incredible glory. Uh, we don't have a heavy duty hitter uh, no. anymore. No, we they... had two or three last time around. Debbie knows more about that than most of us. She calendars it and checks on it. Uh, but Belt, Crawford, uh, Crawford, Crawford and, uh, you know, we gave him almost a year off. He's good. He had like two years ago, he was down for most of the year, and then he came back, and last year he was great, and this year just couldn't follow it up. And Belt is always hurt. Belt, Belt has broken both of his habits. Just Poor because baby. you put on a captain's hat doesn't make you a captain. Poor baby. <laughs> yeah, but you, you makes you a yacht. The one component of the Rock Giants person. this season missing was Posey. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. didn't yes. have yeah. the leadership. That, that's right. That exactly. Was, that was the captain. Put that's right, put everything together. Mm -hmm. well, no matter look, how injured he might be. Yeah, you look at the Giants, you know, and when Posey came up. And it was, I think, 2010. No, 2009 he came up. 2010 we won the World Series. 2011 he got hurt. 
2012, we won the World Series. 2013, no, 2014, we won the World Series. So, yeah, Bochi was a big thing, but I think it, Posey might have been the one constant. When they decided, apparently, to go electronic, they got rid of our beloved manager. And now he's going to be in Texas, too. bochi has got the job. Uh, yeah, the Rangers. The Rangers. That's the team that uh, Bush Jr. was the president of uh, for a long time. Uh, that's I think he's still on Near my hometown. My hometown is oh, Mineola. Yeah? yeah. My hometown is Mineola, and uh, of course, uh, Close. Rangers play uh, uh, in Arlington, uh, uh, just outside of Dallas, and that's, uh, that's where the airports are. Well, uh, I didn't know Mineola was up there. Yeah, Mineola is 80 miles southeast of Dallas. Uh, and it's it's a nice old town. A lot of water moxlins. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Do, does um, Amtrak still stop there? Isn't that absolutely big for you? Amtrak has yeah. to stop there. Bill mm -hmm. Clinton uh, was able to get that to happen, and once they, you know, did the station, they got rid of the hook, so they didn't have to stop to pick the mail up. Nobody. They get rid of the hook. What? They get rid of the hook? Yeah, the hook that what they used to yeah, train when you stopped. Yeah, throw the bag, yeah. Yeah. No, they didn't throw it. They just put it in and, and when it passed, it snapped. And then Clinton, I, he asked me, you know, what, what I'm new do? mayor, what I wish he could do for me. I said, well, you can get the train to stop the Neola. He proceeded to tell and instruct uh, Amtrak to stop in Mineola. Next time I was in Washington, I went in to see him. And he said, you come to thank me? I said, for what? That train's not stopping in Mayola. He said, you got to be kidding me. He called the guy and had the guy come over from Amtrak and said, why that train's not stopping in Mayola? The guy said, uh, well, you know, we did a test for several weeks, and nobody wanted to get off the train in Mayola. <laughs> so he turned to me and he said, uh, Mr. Mayor, what's your response to that? I said, the guy's telling the truth. He said, what is it? I said, train needs to stop so you can get on the train, not off the train. You gotta be out of your mind to be getting the train. He turned to the guy and he said, put the, stop the damn train in Mayola. The guy said, well, build a station. And we did. And we went down. I took a whole group of San Franciscans with me for the first stopping of the train. And the train still stops at that uh, station and so far... Is there the a hotel in Mineola? Uh, yeah. It, well, you, you might call it a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a wooden sidewalk outside. <laughs> spittoons at the bar. <laughs> Mineola has 4,500 and about 98, 99 people still in it. They have put in a library. They have put in a museum. And the museum is every piece of artifact they can get of me. <laughs> Literally. That's about it. I am telling you, you ought to see it. It's, it's quite impressive. <laughs> and, and, and nobody else from Mineola has, has ever ri rose, risen to any prominence besides Willie Brown. Oh, no, no, no. They had one, 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 one movie guy. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Chuck Norris or something like that? Chuck Norris is from Mineola, Texas? That's what they say. Really? I've never heard him say that. Though. Well, I said that's what they say. <laughs> I've heard it said. Smart people are saying it. I, I actually performed marriage uh, for Chuck Norris's cousin. Huh. A guy named Jack Norris uh, married a woman that uh, insisted that I... Uh, and, and during the course of the marriage... Uh, when you know you love, honor, and obey, and sickness and in health, for richer or for poor, so long as you shall live, and you know the answer to that, the guy said yes, and they got to her, and she says, "I'll do my best." <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I heard anybody honest in that response, <laughs> and I've performed a lot of marriages. One of the things I really wanted to do when I was serving as mayor 
I always love because we are that, that city hall is where people regularly go get married. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I did not assign the right person. I said, every wedding that comes here, they need somebody to marry them. It won't be a clerk. I'm coming down as the mayor to perform the marriage. I want to know who they are. I want a photograph of them with me. And I want an autograph. And I want the date of the marriage and what have you. At the end, I intended to publish this book. And I knew exactly the number of marriages I'd perform. I'd have that many buyers of that book. And particularly if they had some, <laughs> if they had some relatives, they yeah, might be yeah, even yeah. more. But that person failed me. So I'm without the potential benefit of that book. Did they the survive your administration? Uh, well, my record is not good. <laughs> you had deniability if I performed your marriage. <laughs> Plausible deniability, <laughs> but we do we do have Willie Brown as mayor of San Francisco to thank yeah, need to be for the way our city hall looks, and and the beautiful restoration, yeah. and the light courts. They were going to do away. They had offices, and and I, from what I understand, they had blueprints. And you said, now take those and throw them out. That's not what we're going to do. No, 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 no. There was a guy named. Brown, who had done the city hall, uh, year, he designed and got it built in 1915 after the quake killed the first one. He right. got it done. 89 comes along, and they had really messed city hall up. They had made it almost as if it was a place where you could uh, uh, do anything in it. It was terrible. You had the sheriff's office was there. You had the law library there. You had a whole host of other things. Uh, that should not have been in City Hall. And so when I came along, I said, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do any of that. They had covered up all of the light courts that Brown had designed right. as to be public spaces, so to speak, uh, for use. And uh, they'd cover them up, literally. I made them take all that off and under, open up both light courts. And when I leave here today, I'm going over because there's an event at City Hall almost every week of some sort. And it is the only component that pays for itself. I said, we'll use it, we'll have it as an event space, we'll charge people to get married there, and what have you. And every nickel that's generated will go to maintain it so that in perpetuity, it will always look really good. And then when I found somebody who uh, objected to the idea that we could uh, require uh, outdoor art at their building. They didn't want outdoor art at their building. You know, that's a requirement under the law. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking to them and I'm, I'm perplexed uh, because we need gold on the dome. There's no way I could justify putting public money and the gold on the dome. So I said, where's your building? The guy told me where his building was. It would be, I said, can you see it from here? He said, yeah. I said, you know, if I was in your building and I wanted to see my public art, I'd put it on the dome because I can see it from there. So he said, what are you talking about? I said, how much are you spending on the public art? He said, I said, then why don't you just buy gold and put it on the dome? Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. That's where the gold comes from, on the dome. A guy named Jeffrey Heller was the architect that helped orchestrate that, and the results are the gold is still there. Is it real gold? It is real gold. It is real gold. Gold, gold, thick, gold is paint, it? isn't it? It's gold, but it's got gold no, in it. No, it's gold. It's, it Period. Gold. It's gold. Are you plated? kidding me? It's gold plated. Uh, can I scrape some off? I do. Scrape some off. <laughs> couple what ounces it? every year. It's going to be like a catalytic converter then. There's going to be people up there. You know, trying to get it. Oh, Leslie Kay, our associate producer, was in Michigan visiting her dad. Let's hear it for her. By the way, she got back from the airport last night. Her car was parked outside of her brother's place on um, Bernal Heights, and someone took out her catalytic converter in the middle of the night while she was out of town. And uh, Ace, who just did she have away anybody watching her brother? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> 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 
He has no video. But, but Ace, who's a part of Reality Check TV's crew with you doing the audio, he was uh, house-sitting, Ace was house-sitting, and he stopped somebody in a gray sedan uh, at 2.30 in the morning the other night who was under a car, just slid under the car in one of those little trolleys that mechanics use and was taking out the, the um, catalytic converter. Apparently they can do it in about four minutes. Yeah. yeah. Two. Three. Three. Two. Two. Yeah. Two if they're really good. And, and, and less than one if Clint Eastwood was real Dirty Harry, and somebody was. And, I, and I, have was a, I have a friend who has a Prius, and it stopped working, and he's parking it on the street praying somebody takes his catalytic converter because <laughs> then insurance will cover the, the repair. Well, if it's a Prius, they may take the Prius and leave the catalytic converter. <laughs> Might be a better deal. <laughs> Well, we're already at one o'clock, but we started a couple of minutes late. Do you, do you it, it, it should be known that uh, as we broadcast together over the years, they've always worried because my arrival <laughs> okay, was simultaneously with the start of the show. One minute to go, and <laughs> he's here's coming the through the door. <laughs> At lightning speed, I can tell you that, you know, I'm trying my best to stay committed to the idea of using taxis and not uh, not uh, Uber or Lyft. Yes, uh, we have Yellow Taxi to thank Yellow yeah. Cab today for providing in exchange for this promotional consideration the, the vehicle yeah, they, that brought they got a wheelchair accessible vehicle for me to take me from my uh, assisted living uh, residents to here and back. Yellowcabsf.com. So we love, yeah, we love the yellow cab. It's called Yellow SF. Yes. That's how you get it on your, and somebody asked oh, me, why Yo are you Taxi. So Yo, Taxi. Yo Taxi is the app. As, asked me, why am I so committed to cabs? When I was in law school, I drove a cab. I was a cab driver. Those are the good old days. 25 cents a I'm gallon not. for gasoline. Oh. And if you had the right kind of equipment, the cab never knew how many miles I'd gone. <laughs> was $11 for cover. You know, that you have to, you had yeah, to pay. Rent it, yeah. yeah, you had to pay. Uh, so it was 11 bucks, you rent a cab. And there were almost, you know, like maybe three or four Black cab drivers. Well, I'm in law school. I can't be yeah, spend all that time driving a cab. So uh, got another buddy who was in law school only too, and he's black. And I said, "Why don't we switch off every other day? I drive one day, you drive one day. They won't know the difference." <laughs> That's funny. We both graduated. <laughs> But I've never, ever forgotten the cabs or the folk that helped me. In those days, they did have student loans, by the way. You know, I, I, I don't know how all of that came about. Uh, and they all have these student loans and kids are graduating and they owe more than they'd owe on a home that they try to buy once they get out mm -hmm. of school, never able to pay it off and all that kind of stuff. And Biden comes along and says, I'm gonna fix it. And obviously that didn't sell. No. No, it didn't. No, it didn't sell. Didn't go over well. No, it did not go over well. But in those old days, you actually, if you were in school, you figured out how to pay for it yourself. No such thing. Well, I, I, I went to school and I had a job, but it was always a minimum wage job. So I got loans and grants, and I would get them, and then I would buy my books and pay my tuition, and. Uh, a lot of times I would take the money and run out to California uh, from Wisconsin. So I would go to school, two semesters, and the third semester I'd take the money and run away. And then I'd come back and say, I'm sorry, and they'd say, all right. And they gave me money again the next semester. 
and I did it for two more semesters, and then I took the money and ran away again. And I never paid off my loans, and then Debbie and I bought a house, and we couldn't get a mortgage until I paid off my loan. And I went, oh, shit. It was $240. <laughs> I lived for seven years on two hundred and forty dollars, wasn't it? Or was it four hundred and twenty? It wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot, and then the interest was three times no. that. There was one percent interest on loans back then. Yeah, and then uh, the banks went one percent. Hey, we can get, we can make money on this, and took it over. Yeah, took it over, and 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 began to let people have money. More lucrative than any you ever borrowed, I suspect, uh, because the numbers are just staggering. Uh, and then people went into the education business based on the opportunity for loans and grants and things of, uh, of that nature. Um, it was tough. But you get through school, you get it over with, and then you eventually pay it off. Now they're changing the name of the school that I went to. Oh, yeah? What's Hastings? Gonna Hastings be? is, they're taking the name Hastings off of it. And it's just well, going to be called... He, turns uh, out he was a dick. University huh? of California Law School, San Francisco. Yeah. And the new building that is being built, it's a residential building for students, they con concluded uh, that they ought to do a partnership so US, UC, UCSF, and my school partnered up. They put up 35%. My school put up 65%. And we topped the building on Thursday. We did the topping for the building on Thursday. And we're going to have about 650 units uh, for student housing. For student housing? Student housing on the land that I went to class on 198 McAllister is becoming wow. you know, something different from what it was and I went down to you know, do the topping of the building well, I found out that I in attendance was a lot of folk you know who yeah. graduated from alumni. the same school yeah. alumni what have you <laughs> when they went around what year you grad? What year you grad? I ended up, I was the oldest graduate. What year did you graduate? 58. Jesus. Yeah, I said that too. <laughs> Jesus never graduated. <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> Jesus but 1958 is when I graduated. Wow. They didn't have a soul in there. Over 150, 200 people that were there that had graduated. We had reached. Oh, uh, you know, you know. He's got a check. He was no, no. He's my partner in 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 the in the lottery. He's a my right. partner in the lottery. Wait, turn around to the camera. There we go. And if you if you could do a pan of the whole audience, because we got to wrap it up. Got your own lesson, Charles. Okay. Well, pan around to the audience. I want to get everybody give yourselves a hand for showing up today. The Will and Willie Show is produced by Flow Communications, host Will Durst and Willie Brown. I'm producer and announcer Paul Wells. And the real figure in this one is Debbie. Yeah. Yes. It's here for Debbie, Debbie Durst. Durst. Debbie Durst. My, my guardian angel. Yes. And, 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 and the living and breathing person that produces comment in the park. Thank you. Every year. Thank you. Every year. We, we've kept it alive all these years, and hopefully we'll keep our system of government alive <laughs> past whatever's going to happen on Tuesday and whatever happens in November of 2024. Right. I want to give thanks to other people who made this possible. Standing in the back, fashion producer Charleston Pierce. Leslie Kay and I came to his birthday party here and we went, this room would work. Because it's safe, it's outdoors, and Will Durst and 
Willie Brown and, and, and myself, we want to keep people safe. So do you think the orange thing is going to run in 2024? Yes, as yes. a matter of fact. He's going to announce. Right he says he's going to announce. But let me tell you what's scary. And I suspect that it will be speculated on from this moment on, Will. When I served in the legislature, the speaker did not have to be a member of the legislature to be speaker. Wow, that's weird. Trump could be the Speaker of the House replacing Nancy Pelosi. If the Republicans... If the Republicans win, a majority. He, would, he does not have to be a member. Now, I'm going to guess that he will see that as a golden opportunity because the Speaker, as you know from being observing Nancy Pelosi, gets as much attention as the President. Trump is desperate for unlimited attention. And power. No one has done that story. So you have been let in on what will become a speculation point throughout the nation from this moment on. Well, so who, if you haven't voted yet, them? vote. 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 Membership. As many times as you can vote. Know, Once is nominates. plenty. And you can see how hard anybody, it was anybody, to cut to the end of the show or the end of the hour, the top Taylor of the hour news Green. with these yeah. two guys going. And again, uh, I want to thank Yellow Cab for McCarthy. providing yeah. the transportation McCarthy. for McCarthy. Will Durst to be here today. I want to thank Leslie Kay, our associate producer. I want to thank so Mona Lisa Mare e Monty, which is basically surf and turf. For having us use the room, Mauricio and Philomena and their son OC and their staff, you can stay. They're going to donate uh, the food and, and 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 beverage that you have. Um, we're going to eat. So you're welcome to join us to eat. And once again, it's a pleasure to be back. Music City for the audio. Richard Mott for um, helping set it up. And Leslie, do you have anything to add to that? Paranoid enough. Well, no. I can't hear you from here. Ace. Ace. Oh, no, Ace and you, of course. Uh, I'm wrapping it up from Reality Check TV for the video and audio and getting us on Facebook Live. We tried. We didn't do it. So we, we were on YouTube Live because they weren't going to stop us in the middle. And, and, and give yourselves a hand again. Thank you for being here for the Will and Willie Show for the first one we've done and the only one we'll do for the midterm election special and Leslie you have one more thing I didn't have a chance to write it all down and I'm on my way to City Hall for the event Buddy, yes and I'm good to see you taking my ballot all right I'm dropping my ballot off and, and, rather than putting it in the mail <laughs> and let's say Susan Brown let's give her a hand for being here she showed up at many of our shows also the Will Durst GoFundMe slash Will Durst if you want to donate because his expenses are more than you'll ever want to have to spend. All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Time to and call Jeanette it a wrap and go Etheridge. home. Great to see you. Jeanette. Great to see you. Etheridge. Thank you. Fade to black. <laughs>